This is video number one in our series um, on Fourier analysis. We use um, the Fourier expansion method on functions that repeat themselves. For example, oh, and just a reminder that um, the playlist for all the videos that we're going to have in this series will be featured at the website at digital-university.org. Now, suppose we just have a simple solve wave function where we start here at 0 and it goes up to a value of 2 then it collapses down to 0 again at the point 3 then it goes up to 2 until we reach the point 6 then at 0 again and it keeps repeating this pattern so we would say that for this function that it has a period of 3 After we go on the x-axis for three units, it just simply keeps repeating itself. So we would have f of x is equal to x, or f of x, plus t. Or we could say any positive integer multiplying t where t is the period of the function. And these are the types of functions, then, that we can expand in a four-way um, expansion series. And here is one of the common formulas that we will use in our future videos, where here we have a constant, and then here we have a four-way coefficient times the cosine of n omega naught t and another four-way coefficient times the sine of n omega naught t where omega naught is the angular frequency or we can think of it as being comparable to the angular frequency so when you multiply it by t it gives you a distance traveled an angular distance traveled and that indeed is a particular angle so this times t does give us an angle in radians and to obtain the uh, four rate coefficients, a sub n and b sub n, you can see that we are multiplying whatever function it is that we want to expand by a cosine or by a sine. So for these type of integrals, we've got one function times another function, which means that to evaluate the integral, a lot of times, we're going to end up integrating by parts. And you will see that in the um, uh, coming videos here. And this constant here, a naught, we can think of as sort of like the average value of the function. We're integrating it over its entire range, over its period, and then whatever value that integral is equal to, we're dividing it by the period. Another common formula that we will also be using is this. Where we have n pi over l times x for our sine and cosine formulas. And now instead of integrating from uh, 0 to the period, we're integrating from minus l to plus l, where l is equal to half the period. So we go on like from minus t over 2 to plus t over 2. So we're still integrating over the entire period of the function. And again, of course, we still have uh, integrals where we're multiplying one function by another. So of course, once again, we're going to be integrating by parts. And again, you'll be seeing specific examples of these uh, in the uh, coming videos. Also. We don't have a formula written out for it, but there is an exponential form of the uh, Fourier expansion. And we will cover that in video number five. Um, in fact, cover it, we will derive it from this formula here. And then after that, we'll have several problems where we'll take a particular function and we'll expand it using the trig form of the Fourier expansion. Then afterwards, we'll work the same problem, and we'll expand it using the exponential complex form of the uh, Fourier expansion method. 
So those will be coming up in future videos. We just want to take um, a few moments just going to introduce some of the basic concepts in this video. Um, speaking of which, here is something that might be worth spending a few moments on. We know what a repeating function is and that it has a certain period. Suppose that we have two different functions that are periodic. If we add them together with the resulting function or the resulting waveform, will that also be periodic? So suppose we have, say, function f1 of t. And this is periodic. It has its own period. Say that's equal to t plus m t1. Try to get it in better focus here. OK, there's our first periodic function. And we have a second one. And that's equal to, it's also periodic. Where m and k are any uh, positive integer. And let's say now we're going to add these together. So we get a function f of t. Well, let's just say, put the t up here f of t is equal to f1 of t plus f2 of t. Now, if this function is periodic, then we could say that f of t will equal f of t plus the period for this function. We'll just call it t. And that would have to be equal to f1 of t plus t plus f2 of t plus t. Well, clearly this t, this t, and this t are all the same. And this t is the period for our um, function where we added two of them together to derive this function. Well, this though, f1 is a periodic function. It's this. So that means that this expression right here is also equal to this one. And this function, f of 2, is also periodic. So whatever this comes out to be, that is also equal to So what we have from here is that t, the period for this function that we obtained by adding these two together, this period, well, we know that it has to be equal to m times t1. It also has to be equal to k times t2. So we have m t1 has to equal k times t2 has to equal t. Or what we would have from here is that t1 divided by t2 equals k divided by m. So we can use this then to determine what t is. Um, let's just take an example. Suppose we have this, the cosine of pi over 3 times t plus the sine of pi over 4. 
times t. Obviously, cosines and sines are periodic functions. Now, what is the period of this one? Well, here, this is time, and this is time. So pi over 3 is our omega naught. Remember, we said we can write an angle like this, where this is angular frequency. So if we have something moving at a certain angular frequency for a certain time, then it's going to form an angle. We mean this to be small t now. Now, how long, though, would it take to, say, start here and go all the way around to form a full circle? Well, that would be the equivalent, then, to one period. And the time it takes for that is called t. So what we have then is that omega naught times t equals one cycle. Well, one cycle is one circle, or that's two pi radians. And radians have no units. So what we have is that the angular frequency times the period equals two pi. So here, for this, we have pi over 3 times the period for this, we'll call it t1, has to equal 2 pi, or t1 equals 6. So the period for this, t1 equals 6. And for this one, we have pi over 4 times t2 equals 2 pi, these cancel, and we're going to have t2 equals 8. So if we divide t1 by t2, we're going to have 6 over 8 equals t1 divided by t2, but we can reduce that down that's equal to 3 over 4. So we have 4 times t1 equals 3 times t2. And that's what t is for our um, function that we get by adding these two together. So here we have t from adding these two together equals 4 times t1. 4 times 6, or 3 times t2, 3 times 8. Either way, it equals 24. So when we add these two together, this function has a period of 6. This has a period of 8. The resulting function has a period of 24. So. What would be, how would we write it so it looks like this? Omega t equals 2 pi, t equals 24, so omega naught equals 2 pi divided by 24, that equals pi over 12. So our resulting function then would be the cosine of pi over 12 times t. So we can get things in better focus there. So we add these two functions together. This is a period of 6. This has a period of 8. The resulting function then has a period of 24 and can be written like this. Now, what happens though if we are adding functions together, but when we do it, let's say that the first one has a period, say of uh, t1, and the next one, its period t2 is just some fraction of t1. Then what happens? So 
best way to get a feel for that is just look at a graphic example. And this is what harmonics and overtones are all about. Let's look at this. See here we have in black is two times the cosine of omega t. Here for the one in blue it's one times the cosine of three times omega t. And here it is. So notice that in the period for this one right here we can fit three of them inside of it, of this. There's one, there's two, there's three. Now what happens if we add these together to get a third function? Well clearly when we add them together here, notice how they're in register, they're in phase. Now when we add them together here, this is going to be three, and also over here when we add them together, this is going to be three. And three is going to be the highest uh, amplitude of our resulting function. Here we'll have a height of three, and here it will have a height of three. But that means then that for our resultant waveform, the period of it is going to be the period of this one right here. Because for this one, all we've done is taken this waveform here, and then for here we've just fitted a bunch of other ones inside of it. Well, now when we're adding them together, the resulting period of the sum of these two is going to be for this one, because it's at the beginning when this one and this one each have their maximum values, and it's at the end of this wave function where once again this one and this one both have their maximum values in register once again to give the maximum value of our resulting waveform. So when you have, this is a harmonic or overtone type situation, so when you have it then where you're, you have a certain period and the period keeps decreasing for each one of these other overtones that occur, the resulting waveform, it might have a more and more complicated pattern, but the period for that waveform will be the same as the fundamental period. The fundamental period being the lowest period of all the functions that are added together. So in this case, there is only going to be one period that's going to show up consistently, and that's the period of this one here, the function that has the fundamental period or the lowest period. Now, there's one other thing that we want to discuss quickly because it can help us in future problems, and I don't think we're going to have time to really go over it in this video. Uh, we want to talk about odd functions and even functions and why it is that when you have an odd function, its Fourier expansion series is only going to consist of sine terms. And if you have an even function, its Fourier expansion series is going to consist only of cosine terms. Um, but come back, join us in the second part for this video. We'll quickly go over that. It's not complicated, but we want to uh, make certain we explain it adequately because we will use that knowledge in future videos. So come back, join us for the second part of this video, and in five minutes or so we'll have this wrapped up, and in the second video we can start working some problems.